All right, peeps. We need to talk about heating, like big time. So Sam and I have been going back and forth between LPG, diesel, electrics for our, you know, fuel for our heating air, water, and our cooking. So in this video, we're going to share our research and give you a more or less direct comparison between LPG heaters and diesel heaters and the different options that, that, that they open up. And by the end of this video, we're gonna share with you what we are planning to do with our own heating system. And this is your chance to let us know what you think about it and if you think that uh, there's a, a more interesting way to do it. So, LPG is what most campers have been going for for years now. Meanwhile, diesel is more seemingly in the marine industry. That's because they don't want to carry your pressurized tanks in the boat. Yeah, uh, filling up LPG in ports is a bit more difficult. That's why they go with diesel and that's why they've been developed. However, in the more recent years, those sort of marine-based diesel heaters, water heaters, air heaters, have been adapted and used in mostly self-built camper vans. Okay, so the reason that uh, we're even debating this, because you know most people go with LPG because that's the established mode of uh, how, how you get you know heating uh, heating of both air and water and cooking uh, in a portable home. However, um, we're going for full-time living. Uh, and also we have aspirations to build a recirculating shower. So the options with LPG become a little bit unstable when you go that adventurous. So although LPG is, it is a bit greener than, than, than using diesel and it is actually much cheaper to refuel with LPG than diesel. Actually, I think it's- Two to three times cheaper yeah, per liter. Yeah, diesel is, is, not, is not cheap and it's getting only more expensive because they're also trying to phase it out. It, LPG is trying to get phased out even faster than diesel. So for a long-term full-time home, um, that doesn't seem very sustainable. So that was our first concern. Power. There's a potential that we might travel the entire globe uh, in this van. Yeah. So the amount of connections that we'll need to refill our LPG worldwide will be quite excessive. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many there are, but they're, they're, yeah, you, you need the big baggie. So you have to rely on every single country, every single region that you go to, to actually have a stash of yeah. LPG. Because not every country uses LPG, not every country even like, it's not, no. not, even, not even on their radar. No. Also, the more rural you go, the, the less likely it is that there will mm. be um, LPG unless a near settlement actually uses it actively. Yeah. Actually, we're just talking about LPG now. We, yeah. said, we said we're going to talk about diesel as well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get onto diesel, diesel in a sec. We just had a few concerns about <laughs> LPG that we wanted to share. So LPG is usually a mixture of propane and butane um, and each country has its own concoction of it. Uh, and, and that's actually very important to note because of the um, freezing point or the liquefying point of LPG. Now, propane uh, liquefies or becomes um, in, uh, unable to, to burn, uh, to burn to warm up your, your camper mm. at around minus 40 degrees Celsius, which yeah. is, is plenty. <laughs> However, when you have a butane mix, butane's uh, liquefying point is actually minus one degree Celsius. Yeah. So the UK <laughs> has 100% propane all year round. And everywhere as well. So no yeah. matter where in the country you go, 100% propane. Yeah. But you go to some countries like Greece. Greece or has, Spain. Yeah. yeah. So the warmer countries quite often. So Spain has a 35 to 60, 65 yeah. propane to butane mix. And Greece has, I think, 20 and... Um, a, a, 20 to 80. Yeah, 20 to 80. So 20% uh, propane and 80% butane. Yeah. That means that the liquefying freezing point of that LPG badge is going to be much lower. So imagine that you fuel up somewhere warm where it has a majority of butane um, mixture and then you don't use up that propane for you know the next three to six months and then you go somewhere cold like Finland or Estonia or somewhere where it's minus 10 at night yeah. and so. that LPG will be unburnable meanwhile diesel is diesel you know it, it they do have additives in colder countries they put in additives but yeah. in general diesel starts turning to a sludge basically unburnable by heaters and such at about, again, minus 40. Minus 40. So actually, diesel and propane uh, mix of LPG are actually mm. quite comparable in terms of um, if you're going for a winterized um, a, a van sort of rig. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> oh, that's really hot. 
That is efficient. In terms of installation, uh, what we know, so for, for diesel, obviously your, your fuel is already on board if your van is, is, is diesel powered. Some vans can be petrol powered, but most are diesel powered. Whilst with LPG, you have to install a completely new tank and that tank has to be pressurized because that is how LPG works. Whilst the diesel just sits in the tank, you know, sloshes around, you know, the, the, the same way as, as, as your van one. Now, for us, um, pressurized systems are unfamiliar hence that we're a bit, a bit wary of them so we don't know enough about them to be comfortable with doing that ourselves at the moment um, we'll see that might change we don't know entirely what was going to happen there also when you buy a diesel heater whether that be for water heating uh, or your air heating um, you buy a burner that then you know generates the heat and, and heats up whatever you want um, but anything pressurized in that system comes already packaged in the unit hence you don't you don't touch it you don't have to deal with it you just you get the unit and you plug it in correctly um, and it's, it's generally much much more straightforward than if you were to DIY a gas system. If you were to install your LPG system by yourself, then you're responsible for pressurizing that system correctly, okay? If you pressurize it wrong, the least you'll get is a leak, the worst is an explosion. Bye bye fire, gone completely. So it is rather dangerous. That danger exists with obviously combustion engines as well, but at least you're not the one trying Building. to pressurize it. <laughs> <laughs> However, I must point out that if you install either one of these systems, you know, either the gas or the diesel, you must then have it checked out by a professional who can then spot any of the mistakes that may occur and issues because both of them can be very, very dangerous. We don't have a bowl nor a spatula, but we have baking powder. He's put flour in my shoes, guys. Now, with, with LPG, um, uh, we were toying between obviously installing a, an external tank and an internal tank. Um, if you install a tank inside the van, you know, those standing up ones, you know, with the, you know, the handles on the side, um, uh, then you have to install that in an airtight, airtight compartment. Um, uh, however, to be perfectly honest with you, it is not actually recommended for you to install a gas tank in your camper no. at all. I mean, um, people get away with it, you know. It, it, people do it. People do it. Even even professionally converted campers uh, obviously have um, that sort of uh, gas tank in there. Our and, one in Scandinavia had it as well. Yeah, uh, but it, it, realistically, um, gas always vents. Um, what happened? I think the wind blew it out. But realistically, gas always vents. Even if it's in an airtight compartment, there's going to be gases in there. And um, um, I don't know how comfortable you feel about that, but that sort of <laughs> bothers me a little bit. You have to be meticulous about turning it off every single time that when, when, when you don't use it, even, even more imperative than when you install it outside. You, I suggest you turn off your gas anyway, whether it's installed inside or outside, uh, but when it's inside, it's even more important. So really, we can go on and on about the differences between the two. Uh, however, to really know the difference, you have to know what you're using them for. So in the, in the camper, you generally have to take care of air heating, water heating, and cooking. Oh, oh, you have a spider on you. Oh, hi, spider. Oh, there it is. Ah. I'm not too afraid of spiders, don't worry. Uh, insert clip of screaming person here. <gasps> Whoa! Touché. So obviously what most people like to have definitely air heating sorted in their campers um, uh, and for LPG there's actually a lot of options for um, uh, um, air heaters. So there's uh, Truma, Ald, Whale uh, and Propex. All of them except Ald I think have basically a blower essentially like, like, like those airtronic ones you know the ones that look, that look similar to, to the diesel ones but essentially it's a burner uh, it, it heats up the air in there and it just blasts it out. All of them are, are excellent options uh, for, for, for an LPG system. And all of them are quite efficient as well, actually. Yes, they are. Mm. They are quite efficient. So, so, so in terms of air heating, that is quite well covered with, with LPG. With diesel, the uh, most creditable companies are Esper, Webasto and Plena. From us calling people around and uh, d doing our research on um, the differences between uh, these companies, they're more or less the same. The diesel air units are usually a bit more expensive than the LPG ones. Yeah. Uh, you can find um, uh, slightly, maybe like the 400 to 500 uh, mark for the LPG ones, um, and the diesel ones, depending on which one you need, can be easily eight. 900 so approaching a thousand also you can get them second hand just looking at air heating alone and not taking anything else into account they're both pretty good options you've got pretty good options on both sides yeah so when we added water heating to the equation 
things got a little bit more sticky. Uh, there don't seem to be that many good options for water heaters, especially instant water heaters. Again, Truma, Whale, Out, Propex, all of them have uh, some sort of um, uh, water, water heating system. However, they're usually boilers. You're making a mess. <laughs> I am not making a mess. It just drips down the side, okay? That's equal to making a mess. Also note there may be flower lumps in this. Guys, usually pan our pancakes are much better than this, honest. So, um, Aud and Truma have very good combi boilers, uh, so they do both air and water heating. However, they are not instant, so yeah. you, you have to wait 20-30 minutes for the water heat, which can be absolutely fine, Dep it really depends on your habits. And I mean, we had that in our rented Scandinavia van, yeah. we had a Truma in there. Yeah, um, it didn't <laughs> really fit our lifestyle needs, and because we're going with a recirculating shower, the instant part of the equation mm. is actually quite important to, to make it work. We need the water tank and the heater that the filter water goes to to be able to be cleaned. Yeah. And uh, that is really, really key for recirculating showers. So f from that angle for us, it w uh, the combi boilers don't seem to be that good of an option. <sighs> but they um, are very good options if that's something you're looking for. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. if it matches your lifestyle. Also, especially if you're not going for full-time living, um, a boiler will be easier to manage. Because also, obviously with these boilers, they don't hold that much water in them. So you have to get a very efficient shower head, so not to use up all of your hot yeah. water at once, especially Thanks. if there's two of you. Also, for your for your dishes and stuff, huh? um, it'll be nice to have hot water if you, if you can. I think this pancake is a loss. Um, okay. I need another thing in my hand. It's most of a pancake. So they are LPG propane instant water heaters. However, they're usually recommended only for static use, like static caravans and stuff, yeah. um, which in our case, it's not static, definitely. No. Um, uh, now, pe people do install, um, uh, you know, propane uh, instant water heaters in their vans, mm. and they don't explode, and they're fine. Um, however, it's that doesn't sound too stable for us. It, I would say it's it's slightly a, a bigger compromise than than we're willing to take on safety. Yes, I would put it. So air heating is really good with the LPG. Water heating not as much. Now with diesel, there's actually really cool uh, water heating options. So you can have a hydronic heater, yeah. uh, which essentially it's a burner and the water travels through that burner and then the heat gets exchanged. So it acts as an instant water heater. Those heaters are usually installed externally, so the flame. Is is trapped in its combustion chamber outside the van and then the exhaust just exhausts out. So the hydronic heaters are definitely a bit more on the expensive side, uh, so that's about what, nearly a thousand just yeah. for the burner. However, there's a really cool trick that, that you can that you can uh, do with the hydro these hydronic heaters. Instead of running water through the hydronic heater, you can run a glycol mixture, similar to what you can run in your radiators. With this glycol line, you run it through the van, you run it past essentially their heat exchangers, yeah. and you just have a fan blowing. Start burning. No, it's about right. Oh, cool. You run the, the glycol mixture the same way as you run water through, it through your radiator, which then radiates the heat out. You can run that hot pipe uh, through heat exchangers, which then either heat water or they can run through a fan matrix, which then the same way as the air blowers will blow the heat out. Which is why these hydronic heaters then suddenly become quite comparable with getting uh, a, a Truma Combi boiler or a, you know a DIY sort of a mix and match system. So if you were to go a full LPG kit out that does both air and water heating that will be between two to three thousand pounds uh, depending who you go with whether you buy it new and things yeah. like that and that's including yeah. the cost of installing an LPG tank as well because yes. you yes. need an LPG tank to run that stuff uh, yes <laughs> um, and if you were to go with the hydronic he heating that that you can create an all-in-one system with that that is between what is it three uh, no it's, 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 it's again it's again two and a half to three thousand we were on the research level of well, the LPG and the diesel hydronic look pretty comparable to yeah. each other so we're thinking, well, why don't we go with diesel heating? Yeah. Um, uh, because uh, with diesel heating, with the heat exchangers, that can act as an instant hot water source, which yeah. means that it's perfect for the recirculating shower. And you can add more heat exchangers uh, down the line. You just need to run the pipes in those areas. Um, and as a huge bonus, which I really wanted to do, but I couldn't figure out how to do it, do it originally, I really want underfloor heating. Mm. Now. Uh, L with LPG, ALD do do underfloor heating. Yes, they do. ALD yeah. do underfloor heating. I mean, 
prepared to pay for it. It's expensive. But you can't do the heat exchanger water trick for no. instant water because diesel is actually, what is it, three times more energy dense per liter yeah. than LPG, which means that it'll be much harder for the LPG to heat up the glyco or the water to the, heat, to the temperature it needs. Instantly. Um, Instantly, yes. So for air and water, they're quite comparable and it is mainly because of our recirculating shower that we need instant hot water. So that's why we were thinking about going hydronic. Now it's cooking, the problem. As soon as you move away from gas cooking, it becomes exceptionally energy intensive. So obviously in our traditional houses right now, most of us use electric cooking. So either induction or you know the, the, the fan like convection um, and that, that, that is really good. But that takes a huge amount of power. Uh, so we'll need maybe three times the, the, the battery bank that we need now. So yeah. Uh, cooking with electricity unless we expand our battery bank to a humongous size and probably have to upgrade our, our van weight limit yeah. um, <laughs> uh, It's not an option. So that left us with using LPG uh, or diesel for cooking yeah. now we look at diesel cookers and they're mainly used only on boats and it doesn't seem to be a big market for them which is understandable because it turns out that uh, cooking with diesel is very is much slower yeah. uh, because it, it takes a lot more energy to actually bring it up to heat because, yeah because yeah. diesel is a lot thicker of a fuel so it yeah. takes a lot more pressure and energy and heat yeah. to actually ignite it which, meanwhile with which, lpg which also means <laughs> that the ovens are these really <laughs> dense beasts so the diesel ovens were heavy they were two thousand pounds and pretty much no cheaper yeah and they were really designed for boats so they were huge as well so we can't use electricity we can't use diesel, diesel. for cooking so our our aim to be basically lpg free um uh, we got, got, kind of got trumped with the cooking because yeah. we like cooking we, yeah. we, as, as you can see we, 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 we like to be cook ready ev ev everywhere yeah. we go the options for lpg cooking are great you know LPG ovens, LPG hobs, you can get a hob and oven combo. They're there, they're yeah, easy, they're, they're available. Yeah, there's or Voyager, there were a few others as well. When we took into account the cost of the LPG cooking into both of the systems, so the LPG system before cooking was between two and three thousand. And all we would need to buy is just an LPG oven, which, you know, maximum. Um, it's five. about 500 or yeah. between three to 500. However, with the diesel hydronic system, not only would we need to buy the same oven, but then we would also need to buy a whole LPG gas tank system. And uh, even getting a smaller underslung tank is not actually that much cheaper than getting a big one. So that alone is going to be a 400 pound cost, then plus the cost of the LPG oven. So that bumps up the price for the LPG all-in-one system, including cooking, to two and a half to three and a half thousand, depending yep. on what you go with. And then with um, the diesel hydronic with the LPG cooking aspect yep. and the cost of the LPG tank as well, yep. that pushes it up uh, to like... Three to four thousand. Yeah. So they're still comparable, depending <laughs> what kind of yep. style thing you want to go with, because you can go much cheaper with LPG and you can probably reduce the cost of the diesel system if you were to basically shop around, maybe get a few more deals. Yeah. Um, or you could get things obviously second hand as well. Why do I get a smaller one? Because <laughs> <laughs> you made it. <laughs> so for the sake of our recirculating shower, we are planning at the moment to go with a diesel hydronic system and then have LPG tank with an LPG oven hop combo to do our cooking. Now, if you have any ideas as to how to cook without uh, LPG um, that we haven't mentioned in this video, then please let us know because if there's a magic way to cook, um, if effectively like a properly, you know, proper meals, you know, roast dinner, you know, two, three hobs type of thing, um, shoot, shoot them in the comments down below and we'll look into them. We haven't bought anything yet, so we're open to suggestions. If you have any other ideas, we'll carry on doing our research as always. Mm. Yeah. And in the meantime, we'll catch you next week, but we're going to enjoy our pancakes now, and we'll catch you later. Yeah. Was the boss say anything? Nope. Eat your pancake. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.